it's gorgeous out. The betrayal. My dogs love coming to this park and I didn't bring them. I wasn't really sure where I was going today though. In my defense, but I feel guilt. <laughs> Look at how beautiful it is. Well, you can't really see the mountains as clearly today, but yes, on the other side of this water is Washington. are choppy. People always say OBC oh, is so expensive, I could never live there. I think living in B. My phone fell. I'm gonna do my makeup again today with you, but um, what I was saying is living in BC is well worth it. I think if you're a, a person who likes things, then living in cheaper, cheaper places is better, like if you want if you, you know, are low income to middle class, like if you want land, you want toys, you want a pool, you want money to be able to go on like vacations and all those things, then yes, live in a cheaper place. But for me, living as like a person in poverty, <laughs> um, living in somewhere beautiful that I love is like well worth it because it's like I'm living for experiences, not things. I've gotten rid of all the things. I had the house, the yard, the double garage, you know, beautiful, a beautiful place. I got to travel to some pretty awesome places, but right now for me, it's more important to live in a place I love versus to have things. Because, well, for one, I just can't tolerate the cold anymore. <laughs> like, yes, it does rain in BC, but Victoria has the best climate in all of Canada all year round. Like, even the winters aren't that wet. And the summers, sometimes it's actually quite scary. Like, it rained, like, once for at least two to three months. So, If I have enough time in this video, I'm going to try to talk briefly about three kind of controversial topics. One is like about manifesting. One is about 
um, kind of like a technique I developed on my own with like sort of shutting out trauma. Like, I haven't been to therapy enough to know like what really works for me or works well for others, but something I've tried is, um, oh, what was the third topic? Okay, so manifesting, I think I'll stick with those two because I probably won't have enough time, but, um, this concealer's disgusting. <laughs> it's been in my car and hot and cold and probably no longer good but um okay I'll start with the positive and then I'll go on to a technique I kind of figured out on my own that helps with um you know when you're feeling kind of stuck in that loop and cycle of like negative thoughts and you can't really get out of it or if you keep thinking about negative people or not like people from your past like negative experiences with them but anyway, um, so starting with manifesting, uh, before I got back to work, I was like watching a lot of like Netflix and stuff and I got into, um, that Korean dating show called Singles Inferno and I got kind of obsessed with it because I don't know, like the second season was just really good, like really good cast um I liked the layout I liked just everything about it was like pretty entertaining and then of course the famous popular um <laughs> look at me <laughs> like Sulky and uh Jin Young like Dex he's like ultra popular after that show and uh and so the reason I make shorts about them is not because I'm like so obsessed with them or something. It's just that people are so obsessed with them. So it kind of gets a lot of views. <laughs> I was like really into them and I thought that they would like work out, but they, um, I guess they're just friends. <laughs> it's too bad. Like maybe like the way the show portrayed it is that like, they just had this really great connection and you know but um then the real world happens and stuff but <laughs> anyway um okay so where I was going with that is that I actually started watching a lot of sort of like you know Japanese and Korean dating shows after that I can't really think of the names of them right now. I think I saw Love is Blind Japan. Then I saw, um, oh, jeez, I should have looked. I'll look up the names. So there was Change Days and Love After Divorce and Love is Blind and Singles Inferno. And there's a couple more. There's a one really good one that I forgot, but um, it's kind of about, was it love after divorce? No, there was another one where it was kind of like older people after being divorced and then finding that show made me cry so much. Just, you know, like it's never too late for anybody at any age and experience and, you know, if you really want it and you go for it, it usually works out. And so anyway, the thing is I was noticing that like the way that Asian reality shows are versus like Western dating shows, I noticed like a huge amount of respect for one another and it's just like a completely different style versus like Western American dating shows where it's like all about drama and and like she said this he said that and it's like completely like there's a little bit about of that with the Asian ones but um it's more so like genuine like about actually finding a connection and like and you know 
seeing each other's points of view and if the person isn't really that into you like really accepting and not trying to like force any like I just can't really put it all into words but I just noticed and I thought oh my gosh I wish I could <laughs> find an Asian guy to date because it just seems like they come from a different way of life where there's still like respect for humans and the way I don't know I think a lot of us are just experiencing a lot of negativity with online dating and that and you know even just in real life whether it be like cheating or um, ab abuse control power issues so I mean not saying that there isn't that there of course it's just that Like, when you really think of it that way, okay, well, maybe there's a lot of phoniness then in the shows and it's not their true selves. But I'm trying to be optimistic, hoping that how they portray themselves is how they really are. And they portray themselves with a lot more respect, class, and dignity than the Western dating shows. So I just kept thinking, like, wow, I hope I can meet an, a Korean guy someday. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> that's not that funny. It's just that, um, you know, I think I ha like sometimes have a bit of an identity crisis because I'm like a white mutt. Like my background's like German, French, Scottish, English, a little bit of Spanish and all this stuff in my family history, but neither side had these strong core values and traditions and stuff. So and they got even worse and with time, like the fa big family get togethers were even less and less. And um, I just had a small family pretty much because part of my family were on the other side of the country and we never really visit, saw them ever. But um, so Normally I would do that in like literally 30 seconds, but I'm just taking a long time because I'm talking. But anyway, um, so it just got me thinking like, you know, I really wish I was a part of something else. Like it would be nice to find someone someday who has a big family. And I know that there can be a lot that comes with that too, like whether it be drama or disagreements or having to deal with uncomfortable situations where you see people you don't really get along with and I know all of that but being lonely and having a small family like I really wish I had the opposite of that so it'd be nice to experience it but anyway so <laughs> I just had this like idea stuck in my head for a long time. I'm like, oh yeah, the next time I date, I'm going to be like, you know, maybe I was swiping no on, on some ethnicities just solely based on looks and not reading like facts about them. And like, who am I to judge? It's like, actually the thing is I have a huge problem with online dating. I usually just swipe no on everybody because it's not about how they look at all. Actually, it's because... I can only, I'm only really attracted to people based on their personality, like nothing to do with what they look like. And so I usually tend to say no to the pictures because you have no clue. You won't know if you get along or if you're a good match until you meet. And there's, you know, anxiety with that as well. So it's just very complex, like a lot of my life and a lot of my beliefs and thinking. I'm just obviously not ready. But where I'm going with that is I just had this idea and I was watching all these shows for months and I was keeping tabs on where the cast of like Singles Inferno went after the show and hold on, I'm going to do my brows. The eyebrows are looking a little better. <laughs> I'm getting to the point in life where I'm just going to stop doing them all together and have no eyebrows ever because I can't afford microblading. I've never even tried it. I don't want to get tattooed and then it turns green or whatever. can't remember which one does that or if it's microblading. 
but um yeah I just I find that like I try to be gentle but if the more often I do it then I lose more eyebrow hairs so they're so it's like there's no point but anyway um okay so to like to kind of give like more of a context of why I'm talking about this like specifically like about dating and wanting to date an Asian guy and all this um I just like it kind of goes hand in hand with like manifesting like it's just kind of weird how sometimes it just happens so quick and like it could be anything um a lot in my life I kind of joke that I'm psychic because I'd like have these sort of visions like that's so raven <laughs> or dreams and stuff that happen right away like say you think of someone that you haven't seen but it's not like something you can control it just comes to you like there was this one boy specifically just came to my mind and in elementary school he was in foster care and I kind of just thought I wonder what happened to that guy like where he ended up and everything and literally within a week I saw him at the mall like just really odd coincidences like that where it's just like okay am I um do I get premonitions or am I like I'll, like way more than just that that I can even get into like it happens so frequently that I always say I should start writing it down but it doesn't but I never do but sometimes it happens often a lot sometimes when I'm listening to music or the radio or tv and like I'll say a really specific word in my head that you, it's just not a common word it's not like a word like there or that or he or she or just a really a word that just you don't hear every day all the time in my head and then suddenly it's said like things like that at the exact same time <laughs> anyway so um so back to me thinking oh I'd love to date an Asian guy <laughs> so I uh I went to this concert it was like quite a ways away from where I lived I don't want to say where because I don't want someone might investigate <laughs> who it is somehow but uh I went to this concert and I went all alone and it was a band I like really wanted to see um for a while and uh actually I might have even talked about this briefly in one of my videos because I just thought oh the odds of them ever seen is very unlikely but um oh my god there's someone swimming down there <gasps> wow okay um so I went to this event by myself and then I I did have a little to drink that day so I thought I was feeling kind of chatty and I was excited to see the band and then I uh um I went and oh so I was feeling kind of chatty and then I went and uh, started like talking to one of the security guards by the stage and we were just hitting it off right away like we were just getting along and he just had a great smile and great energy and and all of a sudden I'm like <laughs> I'm like, are you Korean? And he's just like, <laughs> he was just so taken aback because um, he actually was adopted from Korea, but he's grown up his whole life, um, you know, in North America. And so he's, you know, more, he's, you know, he's not quite Korean, but he's from Korea. So it was just kind of funny that, <laughs> Because I like thinking about how how I'd like to meet an Asian guy. And then I talked with this guy and like we both had like an attraction and connection to one another and we exchanged numbers and stuff. And 
but the reason it didn't go forward is I just thought, well, we're kind of at different places in our lives and we also live quite a distance from each other. So I thought, I don't know if this would work. Like, I kind of regret not seeing where it would go. Like, he was really awesome, really kind and stuff. But I, I don't know. I'm at, I guess I just wasn't willing to take the chance. And, um, <laughs> anyway, but so that's just what I mean about manifesting. Like sometimes you're thinking about something so much and then just happens like for you, like right away. Like, I mean, <laughs> I guess that's kind of a silly example. Like, okay, so you went to a concert and there was this Asian guy and he just happened to be adopted from Korea. But, um, <laughs> it's just that... <laughs> At the time, I was like feeling really bad about myself physically, like how I had gained weight and everything and just, you know, and I got dolled up that night and I had a bit to drink and I was feeling a bit, I tend to stop being so hard on myself. <laughs> I don't drink anymore, but like that's because that's something that I've used to try to like with confidence like having self-confidence issues so I'm that's not the only reason I'm not drinking anymore I'm not drinking because I just don't feel like I really need it and I'm trying to just be who I am and not feel like I need to change anything or and another thing is um just the way it actually does destroy lives and you know my dad was an alcoholic growing up so um I just saw firsthand how that ruins people's lives and I thought well at any given point in my life I could start drinking like just because I I have it under control now I drank a lot when I was like in my 20s not like a daily thing but just like a social thing to help with anxiety and whatnot but anyway, so, um, <laughs> so yeah, a little, that's a little bit about kind of like manifesting. Um, I'll have to get more into it another day and actually like write down some facts so I can like come up with, I'm getting lost in my thoughts. I'm distracted there's people walking there's birds flying the waves are crashing <laughs> and I'm trying to do my makeup at the same time and I know that my phone is gonna run out of um room soon but yeah I'm gonna try to use this palette today and uh Anyway, so quickly, I'll just talk about one thing. I was going to explain a tip that I use to, um, you know, I used to spend hours doing my makeup to like make it look good for those pictures that I post on Instagram and some of the videos I used to have on YouTube. But I find that when I'm doing this, I cannot, I like, can't do it in s sunlight for one and I'm rushing. I'm rushing thinking about the time on the camera and I'm rushing because of the people walking by so things are looking really bad. I usually spend a long time making sure everything looks nice mostly. I don't have a lot of lip colors now because I threw away and got rid of, donated and sold all of my Jeffree Star collection. so. I'm using eyeshadow. <laughs> I think today I'm just gonna keep the, I'm not gonna try to do any sort of um, effects. I'm not gonna do halo eye or anything. I'm just gonna do, add one color, one shimmer. I tend to like if my lips are dark I want my eyes light and if my eyes are dark I want my lips light and if they're both dark I always joke that I look like 
a big fat <laughs> I won't say anyway um I feel like I just look bad The reason I'm not using my brushes is because they're covered. I need to wash them and I need new brushes and I need new contour brush. So I just used D5 pretty nice. Someone help me help figure out how to do liner on hooded eyes. Like I know the bat wing method, but I just can never, I need to take my time. Oh yeah. I can't talk or record during this. I need to start doing the liner first and the wing last because I always lose the point and the shape and it just ends up looking terrible. Like my wing just looks ridiculous. You, you, like, you know, the girls have the super long lines, but it looks good on them. It doesn't look good on me. Oh, I think this pen is not... Oh... Not good. <laughs> One side is like completely different shape. And then it just carries on and on and on. Like those videos you see where it's... <laughs> my artificial light at home and my mirror close-up mirror in darkness <laughs> good enough oh. I got a lot more looks in the store at Walmart from guys when I was there the other day when I did my makeup so drastically and I'm thinking to myself I wonder what they're thinking is she cute or is she scary <laughs> Not too shabby today. A little better. <laughs> hmm. It does make quite the difference in how I feel about myself. Like, I feel a lot more attractive. Well, I just am more attractive with makeup. <laughs> Most people are, unless you're a natural beauty, but especially when you have really bad rosacea. Like, if I didn't have bad skin like that, I would never wear makeup ever again. That was like the only thing I really don't like. But who knows, maybe I could go see a eventually one day afford like laser type of surgery where it could actually help. A little better this time.
Okay, so the thing I was going to quickly say about a technique I've learned recently is, well, before I got back to work, I just was so trapped in my head because I had nothing to do all day. For my, like, I have CPTSD, depression, anxiety, I'm autistic, and uh, I still work because, well, for one, I want to work. For two, I am disabled and I struggle a lot and there's only certain jobs I really can do. And even then I still struggle in so many ways, but I'm still pushing through. But um, I want to give that tip to some people. Like if you're disabled and not working and you really feel hopeless, and but then you're getting trapped in your negative thought patterns or trapped in trauma thoughts and reliving things and medication, nothing's helping. Like you need to... I highly recommend trying to get back to work, like even if it's just part time, just try as many things as you can. Just keep trying and if it doesn't work for you, quit and try something else or get into volunteering or just something because the times that I don't work, it's the worst. Like I, all I can think about is like, oh, what was me and what happened to me and like, how I could have been a different person today if I hadn't gone through that. Like I already had things stacked against me, like being autistic and, and like I have fibromyalgia, which I actually think is Ehlers something syndrome. I haven't really, like I have a lot of those characteristics, um, like double jointedness. I used to be able to put my thumb to my wrist, not anymore with maybe the weight gain, <laughs> but <laughs> There's a whole bunch of things like hyperextended knees and whatnot, but uh, they kind of chalked it up to fibromyalgia because they didn't really ask me any questions. They kind of just asked me what I was experiencing and it was such a wide range, ver a range of things that it was like impossible for me to explain. So they're like, well, it's not MS, it's not this, it's not that, it's fibromyalgia. So I actually think I'm going to have it investigate. Like, I know I'm fat, but like I have always had really stretchy skin and stuff like that like even on the tip of my nose I'm not gonna do because I'm wearing makeup but like at a young age like I could do all that stuff and whether I'm fat or thinner like I still have all that so and there's a whole bunch of things but that's like I think it's a connective tissue disorder and it hurts your joints and or a bunch of things that are very similar to what I experience and it's actually somehow linked to autism so who knows one day we'll probably figure it out but okay so back to my technique so besides getting busy getting into hobbies getting um, back to work or volunteering um, if you can of course not everybody can I'm not saying everybody can but I just think that a lot of us who are disabled there's gonna be something out there for you like if you really struggle socially then you could try to do things like what I'm doing where I work independently delivering and I'm not really having a lot of those social situations like I had my own home daycare for four years but I just absolutely love that because it was children who are just like the most kind good spirited little beings before people ruin them and I miss that job so much and I I should get way more into it another time but anyway see I'm rushing because I know I'm running out of time but um just quickly what I wanted to say is that I started doing this thing where if somebody comes up like say it's some an ex or an old friend or like my dad or just something something where it's been a really negative experience I just instantly imagine that I'm like shutting the door on them or locking them out of my mind and it's like seems like such a weird thing but it's like a visualization technique that really works for me it's like I mean if I think hard enough about it I could turn it into a horror movie where it's like they're trying to get in the door frantically but <laughs> But, um, that's not really funny, but yeah, just something I've tried, like immediately, like somebody pops up in my head and I'm like shutting the door on them and I'm like, 
you know, they no longer serve me a purpose. The lesson was learned and so I'm shutting them out of my mind and it's been helpful a lot lately. And I don't know if it's because I've been back at work and haven't had all that time to think about past events, but I, it's a technique I think might be valuable to some others if, because what I did notice with some of my friends who are also disabled is they kind of bring up the past a lot, which is helpful to a degree. Of course, you need to be able to vent about it, but if you're bringing up the same thing every single time, then you're just reliving your trauma and you're, it's going to put you in a certain place emotionally, like sadness, anger, um, grief, like a whole bunch of things. And so we have to kind of try to stop those thought patterns sometimes. And one thing, I think something I did learn in therapy before was that if you say, if a thought pops up and say it's not even about a certain person, say it's just like about paranoia or something negative about yourself, you just stop in your tracks and you say, is that helpful? And a lot of the time, no, it's not. And so, you know, we are in control of, it's like, who's driving this ship? We are, we have to be able to get out of these habits. Like they're stemmed from childhood to adulthood and I'll get more into it and offer better advice, but that's just a little tip that I have that I've um, developed recently. And it just feels good to be able to be like, like if they just pop up for some reason, say I see something, I hear something, smell something, something's familiar, and I think of that person, then I just shut them out of my mind and lock the door and they're not coming back until next time. But maybe eventually they won't be at the door anymore and they'll be locked out for good. So anyway, um, hope you're having a good day and I'm looking forward to doing more of these and getting back into it for a while. I was working full time four days a week for 10 hours a day. And I just, by the time I had days off, I had so much cleaning and laundry and shopping and wanted to spend quality time with my pets, like to the point where I just couldn't do these videos, but, um, I still have a lot of things to share and, uh, even if they're not very successful, I don't really mind, like, eventually it might help somebody and that's all that matters, so, and it's helping me, so that's cool too. Like, it feels like a therapy session, being able to vent or offer any sort of wisdom or, yeah, anyway, so, till next time.